All right, here we go. It's been a while, but we're still playing Netrunner. This is a game that we played at the New York City Tuesday night Netrunner meetup on September 24th, 2013. I've actually got a lot of other games recorded, but none of them have been really worth posting. They've either been quick or uh, the video came out bad. Here was a good one. So on the left, you have Tom. Uh, playing his Wayland deck, he always plays. Uh, and on the right, there's me playing my Wizard Darwin deck. Uh, we're discussing with the people uh, whose feet and legs you see uh, how the Darwin... I came in second place in the most recent tournament uh, in New York City with this Wizard Darwin deck. First place was another Wizard Darwin deck. And fourth place was a Noise Darwin deck. So Darwin totally dominating the scene. Uh, these guys weren't there. We were telling them the story. Just so you know, Tom's better than me. I mean, that second place finish I had was uh, the best I had ever. Tom's won two tournaments before. So, here it goes. Turn one. Interesting. It's installing three ice as opposed to the typical Wayland starting move of installing two ice and taking money. He must not have a beanstalk or a hedge fund in his hand. If I'm going to face check ice, the thing with the Darwin deck is you cannot afford to have Darwin get trashed. Program trashing will kill you. You have one program, you invest everything you have into that one program, and if that program is trashed, you're done for. Uh, so if I'm going to install the Darwin, I can only do, you know, if I'm going to face check, I have to do that before installing Darwin because of possible roto turrets or anything like that. Alright, you'll see here also, the card draw in this deck comes from pro contacts. Uh, and the money comes from a lot of resources like Katie Jones, Liberated Accounts, Daily Casts. So in the first turn, I spend all my money to get pro contacts. Which I drew, installed Katie Jones after using Pro Context twice. I drew two, I played two, so that evens out to five. Okay, here we go. Before I even have a Darwin on the table, right, he's gonna try to push some things through. See, Roto Turret. I was wise. I was wise not to, you know, uh, face check after installing Darwin. Oh, he's gonna let me in. It's Simone, but I'm the wizard. Using those wizard credits, trashing that shit. Also, that Roto Turret cost him four, the Ice Wall cost him five. Early Hostile Takeover got him his money back, which is probably why he didn't res that third ice, so he could still have two credits uh, for his Hostile Takeover. That bad pub, I'm gonna use the heck out of that. Okay, so pro context. Pretty much any time I draw a card this whole game, I'm getting a credit, which is so necessary. Alright, so I use an infiltration here for two credits uh, so I can get the daily casts out. I really didn't want to do that. I wanted to save the infiltrate for infiltrating. Uh, but I think I had another one in my hand, uh, and I just really needed to get the ball rolling. You know, the, the Darwin deck is sort of weird. It's like the opposite of a criminal deck, right? It has a slow start. You have to set up the Darwin. You have to, in, you know, get it, install it, uh, make it big, right? They can clear it and reset it, but they can only reset it so much. Um, you're happy to see them reset it, actually, sometimes. And then once it's set up, the corp is like, oh, shit, because you can just run into any server you want at any time uh, for a reasonable cost. Uh, but when it's not set up, you're pretty much sitting here trying to catch up to the corp. You almost feel like uh, a corp yourself trying to catch up to a runner uh, and uh, who's gotten out ahead of you. Yeah, so my opening hand with this deck tends to either be the economy or the Darwin. It's kind of hard to get both in the opening hand for some reason. Mathematically, there shouldn't be a reason, but there just is. And here he goes, pushing through the agendas before I can do anything about it. So he gets the Gila hands. Right, Darwin is now strength one. 
I mean, we, we had a joke running where I was basically making whale noises uh, every time Darwin got bigger, like... Mm. Running gag. Local flavor. Alright, now see, the thing is, Darwin's only strength one, but so is that ice wall. And I got a bad pub, so I can run in there for just one credit. Take a look at R&D. And I do so. I can also now, because I have daily casts on the table, I can spend a lot of my clicks uh, on running, and I don't necessarily have to spend the clicks on uh, getting money. Katie Jones also is not click intensive, I just spend one click a turn. I also have enough money that I don't really have to, you know, some decks they rely on Katie Jones so much, they have to make sure they use one click for Katie Jones every turn. In this deck, you know, I could draw liberated accounts, and then it's like, oh, I won't really need to spend my click on Katie Jones every turn. So, I'm running R&D, making use of that bad pub. If it's open, I gotta check it. And there indeed is liberated accounts. Yeah. You know, it's pretty much I spent my first click running R&D. And the rest of my turn, it's like, well, you know, there's nothing else to run. I just saw an ice in there. I really don't want to spend four credits on that roto turret. That's a waste of money. Well, three, because I have a bad pub. And I can't run that remote now. The reason I can't run that remote is because there could be Archer. He's got a Hostel and a Gila Hands over there. He could sacrifice his either one of those to an Archer. And the whale is only strength two, now becoming strength three. Until the whale is strength six, you know, between a combination of personal touches, tokens, ice carvers, a parasite on an archer that I know about, something like that. Until I can guarantee that I'm not going to hit an archer and, you know, get ruined by it, I can't run uh, any face down ice unless I've infiltrated them or something. Because if the Darwin is trashed, it, that sets me back pretty much my whole game. I have to go find another Darwin, install it again, start advancing it again once per turn. Especially once you put a personal touch in the Darwin, you really can't let it get trashed. Because then you're never getting those personal touches back. Even if you have another Darwin somewhere, uh, everything you put into the Darwin is gone. You pretty much be relying on data suckers only. So I'm installing my Plascrete. He is Wayland. I drew one. I got all right, He's got that one advanced card over there. If that's a posted bounty, he could have gone advance, advance, scorch. I did have enough cards in my hand not to die from that, but you know I'd rather not lose these important cards in my hand. Uh, not that anyone ever does that, but still, you know he's two turns away from a theoretically possible double scorch. Right? If he advances it even once this turn and it's a posted bounty, the next turn he could go advance, score, double scourge. And I can't run again there, because Archer, so I'm pretty much at the mercy of whatever that uh, card that he's advancing. And it's an Atlas with a counter on it. That is bad, but it's not posted bounty bad. You see, I've also installed my E3. That's going to help a lot, because uh, any of his ice that have multiple subroutines will now be much much cheaper to run. You know, that uh, that roto turret that normally costs four to go through with Darwin um, now would cost three and I have a bad pub so it costs two. Yeah, he, he wanted to remind me to use uh, my cyber feeder to um, uh, pay for that run there, uh, but I didn't want to because I was using it for the HQ run. Not that it really mattered which one I used it on.
Oh, now that I can see his hand, I wish I would have gotten that troubleshooter on the HQ run. I would have trashed that thing. Alright, he's doubling up his HQ installs there. No, oh, he's defending everything. Okay, so I'll use my cyber feeder now that I've, I've installed now to increase the whale size up to five. One more strength on that whale, and I can run freely wherever I like uh, because it'll be strong enough to deal with Archer. Pro Context is so awesome. I should watch this video again and count how many credits I got from Pro Context. The thing is, even if his ice aren't archers, uh, if there's something else that has more than one subroutine, like a caduceus, is really annoying. Anything with more than one subroutine is annoying, even though I've got the E3. It's sort of a weird, weird thing with Darwin, right? Is that the cheap ice sort of become more expensive to break, but the expensive ice, if, if you're strong enough to break them, become cheaper. Right? A Caduceus costs three if with if you have an E3 on the table. An Archer costs five if you have an E3 on the table. You know? Uh, a toll booth costs well three always and then two, five. A Janus, if your whale is really that strong, will cost you also five. <laughs> I guess there are, you know, I guess the only really way that you can really get screwed is if there was something like a, a woodcutter. Empty Katie Jones, rake in the cash. Liberated accounts, get even more cash. See, now I've got enough for two archers, at least. And I'm going to run that server. Right, now that my whale is strength five, plus personal touch is six. Okay, wall of static, cyber feeder. Uh, plus bad pub breaks that and of course it is an archer that's good for me he loses a point he was getting ahead he had four it was four to nothing right. so I lose five credits to the archer and it's getting trashed with wizard credits Thomas Haas getting trashed okay, so now I know that it costs seven to run that remote no worries going there and I take even more money from liberated accounts. Cha-ching! He's taking money. And installing. Did a pretty good job of hurting him in the wallet this game, right? You know, once your Darwin is big, you're not really afraid to run anywhere. I'm pretty confident Archer is the strongest ice he's going to have, so I'm not taking my strength above six. I'm saving my cyber feeder credits. Uh, to use during the actual runs. You know, my economy is just so huge here for these resources. Um, yeah. You know, making him res all these ice, keeping him real poor. Trashed his Simone with my wizard credits. Trashed his Thomas Haas. Not that that's an economy card unless it's paired with Simone. Uh, yeah, trashing just about everything. Okay, I broke into the remote and. It's another Thomas Haas. Trash, wizard credits. And I'll take even more money. And put money on Katie Jones. Now that all the accounts have been liberated. Okay, he cleared virus counters. That's annoying, because now I can't run that archer. If he installs an agenda behind the archer next turn, well, I can't run there. That's a shame. Uh, but you see how my whale reset to one, because when he clears virus counters, it takes his whole turn. So my turn immediately begins, and I use a cyber feeder to put the whale back at one. So he can't really bring the whale below one. I get another personal touch on there, so now he can't really get the whale below three. And an ice carver, effectively, he can't get the whale below four. Right. Okay. Start up another daily cast. I'll wait for him to install something now. Here it goes. All right. So he knows this turn, unless I have another personal touch or a surge or something. Right. The whale 
is effectively strength 5, so I can't do anything about the archer this turn. Unless I play Surge. Do I have Surge? If I have one, I would definitely play it and run as remote. Uh, Data Sucker could also do... If I played Data Sucker, I could run Archives and then run as remote. So here I go. I'm basically using my pro contacts uh, to go and try to find a Surge so I can get into that remote. Um, I've only got one click left, so if I had a Surge, I'd have to use that one to play it, and I wouldn't have a click left to run. So I use my last click to put money on Katie Jones, keep the economy rolling, since all the liberated accounts are gone right now. None on the table. Alright, so he can push that agenda through, if it is an agenda, and there's nothing I can do about it. Until next turn. See, I'm also, you might be like, well, if you can't run the remote, why don't you run R&D? Well, that could be an archer, too. Right? He has a Gila Hands. I mean, yeah, I'd like him to sacrifice the Gila Hands, but that's not a good trade if I lose my Darwin with two personal touches. I basically cannot run a face-down ice. Every face-down ice on the table is an archer, as far as I'm concerned, until proven otherwise. So... We expose. I see what it is. The camera didn't see what it is, though, so I forget. If I run it on this next click, that probably means it's an agenda. If I don't run it, then it probably isn't. It probably wasn't, because it looks like I'm installing my medium hitting R&D instead. So, run R&D. Click three. Yep. Roto turret. Very annoying. Um, if he puts a corporate troubleshooter behind a roto turret, that could be game over for me. Um, roto turret is strength zero, so no matter what, Darwin can break it for four credits. You know, assuming you have no other cards on the table but Darwin. However, that's really annoying to pay four credits just because it has two subroutines for a really weak ice. So you gotta remember the amount of pressure the corp is feeling right now. Right? It's like sometimes when you're the corp, the runner doesn't have a sentry breaker. And you're like, okay, he doesn't have a sentry breaker. You're feeling pretty good behind your sentries. Maybe the corp is playing, the runner is playing the Atman deck. So like, okay, his admins are strength three and four. I got a strength one ice wall. I'm feeling okay. I got I can protect something. Right now, that Darwin is strength three with two personal touches, strength five. And the ice carver reduces the strength of all ice by one. So effectively, strength six. Any ice, six or less, I can walk through it with money. And I've got bad publicity. And I have cyber feeders. Right? So it, and I have an E3. And I, if I hit cards, I use my wizard credits and trash them. I steal this hostile takeover. Right, now it begins. Now it begins. Right, the corp is sweating. This is big old whale. No ice can keep him out. He can spend his whole turn clearing virus counters. In which case, I'll spend a whole turn getting the virus counters back and taking credits. And if I just play one surge then I'll be back in the game immediately. And there's three surges in the deck, and he knows it, and I know it, and I haven't played even one of them yet. And I've got everything set up. I've got all the economy, I've got the E3, I've got the medium with counters on it. He scored four points, but he had to sacrifice one to an archer. He could try to res another archer, which would slow me down, it wouldn't keep me out, but he'd have to lose his Gila hands, and his economy is low. Stealing his hostile takeover also really hurt his economy. Okay, he cleared virus counters. So this is my recovery turn. Right, he spends a turn basically just resetting my board. 
So I have to spend a turn, you know, building it back up. It does keep me from running on that turn, pretty much. Uh, at least anywhere there's archers. See, I can actually run R&D here if I have the money, because the strongest ice there is the Caduceus at strength 3. Well, technically strength 2 when I hit it with Ice Carver. I can't run the remote. But I don't want to run the remote right now. There's nothing in there to get. I think I'm trying to figure out the math of where and when I can run right now. Because the sooner I get my uh, counters, back on my medium, or the sooner I get Darwin back up to strength, uh, the sooner he's sweating bullets again. Really, it should only take you, hopefully, a turn to get it back up. Two at most. Right? Do not give him a two-turn window. Then he's going to be able to push an agenda through. Taking the Katie Jones money. Playing a sure gamble. Loaded. Cash money. Wizard makes it rain. Last click. Run R&D. See, that was important. Just even if I didn't see anything, just to get that medium token. That virus counter on the medium. thinking long and hard now. If I do not have a surge, then he could try to put an agenda down right now behind the archer, and I would not be able to run it uh, on the next turn without a surge or a data sucker. However, I have a gin on the table. He puts it something in there. Because I have a gin on the table, uh, I could use one credit to get a data sucker, one cyber feeder credit to install the data sucker, run archives, and then run through the archer. That is a possible move. But I've got something different in mind. I'm just going to nail R&D while I've still got medium tokens. Also, I don't remember what that card in that remote was. Right? It could have been a corporate troubleshooter, in which case I can never run that remote ever, as long as he has money. Okay, so I parasited out that roto turret, because that thing was costing me a lot of money per run, so I will gladly spend two credits and two clicks once to remove it forever and not have to pay three credits every time I run R&D. So we run R&D with the medium, and we score us a corporate war. Get points now. And pro contacts. Keep the hand full. He is Wayland. You cannot forget that. And he has an Atlas counter. Is even though his economy is low, I can never forget the Scorch possibility. Keep my hand full, even behind the one Plascrete. Keep my hand full. And, you know, professional uh, context really encourages that kind of behavior anyway. Because uh, every time you use it, you get money. So it's like, I want to keep my hand full. If I have nothing else to do with the rest of my turn. I'll even make sure that I draw my hand back up uh, before, you know, I do Katie Jones or anything like that. Use my Atlas 
Alright, he uses his Atlas token. Whoa. And he gets a corporate troubleshooter into his hand. Yeah, I think that card that was in the server first was Simone Diego. Then he installed another card on top of that. And that, I have to assume, is the corporate troubleshooter, that third one. So, because I'm seeing, assuming it's the corporate troubleshooter that he just got with an Atlas token, I mean, he could have bluffed that. Um, but whether he did or he didn't, I have to honor it. Because if I hit an archer corporate troubleshooter, and he has even one credit <laughs> to use to increase the strength of the archer uh, above the strength of my whale, I lose. Game over. Trash program. Whale trashed. GG. Uh, so instead, and now, my game lies in running the centrals. I've got to use that medium. Maybe there's an agenda in HQ if I run there, but that remote is solid. It's just R&D running. So we're just going to load up on money to prepare to run R&D a bunch. And he clears virus counters again. So I start filling him again. See, as soon as I have the money to actually make some runs in R&D, clears off the virus counters. See, now, the thing is, the ice that are currently on R&D are strength 1 and 3. So for him to clear suggests that that new ice, probably another archer. So I'm not going to run a face down ice if I don't have strength 6. So I'm just going to take monies and draw cards and take credits. Use green leveling. So that card in the middle of the remote, if it's, you know, uh, Simone Diego, a card, it is Simone Diego. Oh, he was getting money to res Simone Diego. Alright, so that is probably an agenda right there. But the corporate troubleshooter means I cannot run there. Period. End of story. I'll just lose if I do that. Cannot stress that enough. Yep. So as much pressure as he feels from the big whale that just got surged and can now run right into R&D, I'm feeling the same pressure from that unassailable remote. It's a chum. I don't know why he res the chum. It cost him two credits to install it and one to res it. But it only increases the strength of that caduceus behind it to five which is not a big deal. I guess if I had run it and my strength was not five, then he could have hit me with that, like in a surprise. But I wasn't going to run with less than six strength because Archer. Yeah, running R&D here. So that chum is costing me nothing, and he spent a total of three credits and a click on it. Not the greatest idea. So I can just keep running R&D all day. It's so cheap without an Archer there. And I score a bunch of points. Oh, one point. So I've currently got four, and he's got three. But he's about to get some more from whatever that installed card is. Is it maybe a posted bounty and he's thinking about it? Okay, he advances twice, gets another Atlas counter. 
Simone Diego paid for that, and he immediately uses the Atlas counter to go and get something else. An archer! So he just didn't have an archer. But now he can go and get one. And he has one click left, because using the Atlas counter does not cost a click. And he installs. Gee, I wonder what that is. And he throws away, realizing the chum is useless. Uh, throws it away. Saves a credit on the install. Yep, but that's okay. That's okay. If I can get some money, I can run R&D safely. And I really, really want to because I have three medium counters right now. And because he just used an atlas, he just shuffled R&D. So I'm going to see all new cards if I run R&D on this turn right through that archer. And if he reses the archer, that's cool. He'll lose a whole agenda, right? Helping me catch up in the score. So it's going to cost me, assuming that's archer, archer cost me five credits to break. Caduceus costs three and ice wall costs two. So that's ten. If I can get ten credits and a click left, I will run the hell out of R&D. Alright, so there we go. Got my money. Run R&D. And you res the archer. By Gilehands. Hurting his economy. Using all my bad pubs and my cyber feeders. Notice how I didn't use the cyber feeder to increase the size of the whale that turn, because the whale was already big enough. There was no reason to make it bigger. And now I get to see four cards. Trash that with my wizard credits. Score that one. I have to let him keep that one. And I have to let him keep that one. Alright, so now the score is now four to five. I'm ahead. How about that? This is a situation where he really has to clear the virus counters. Um, I've got four medium counters. He does a mandatory draw. I'm only gonna, if I run R&D again, if I can get up to ten credits, uh, and I have, I have four on the table it looks like, plus the bad pub, plus two cyber feeders. It's four, five, six, seven. I could just take three credits and run, uh, and I will get into R&D. No problem. Um, I would see, let's see, I would have five medium tokens at that point, which should let me see four new cards, only one of them is, see five cards total, only one of which is old. Uh, and the fact that I'm at uh, <laughs> five points, that's a likely win. Was I smart enough to realize that, though? Was that my mistake, not running R&D this turn? Could have run R and D that turn, but it. And he cleared virus counters. There, I did have a chance. I I could have gone in. I didn't. So he cleared. Accounts back in the money. Back in the money with the liberated accounts. Scores a hostile. Awesome. Bad pub is going to save me a lot. Gotta always remember that bad pub. One short on breaking that archer. So I gotta do something else instead. How many circles do you have in the deck? I should go back and count how many times I use pro contacts. That card is MVP. So I have another plan. I have a backup of plan. Okay. Alright, now I got a data sucker. 
So I run archives to get a data sucker token. Whoa, there was points in there. There was points in there. I am at six. He thought I, it was game over and I won, but I was actually at six because I have all these one-pointers. He's at five. We're pretty much both one agenda away. I got to imagine this mostly. We've seen all three Gila hands. You know, there's pretty much only two pointers left in there. We've seen uh, all three hostile takeovers, I believe. So next agenda is going to win it. With the knowledge that the next agenda wins the game, I'm just going to run R&D. Maybe I can win. Scorched Earth, that doesn't win. Yeah, the fact that he's not installing agendas in the unassailable remote server tells me two things. Number one, either A, <coughs> he has no agendas in his hand, so running R&D is the way to win here, right? Because that's where all the agendas are. Or B, he doesn't have enough money to activate the corporate troubleshooter. You see, some of these turns, he's got zero credits, which means I could run the remote. Uh, and he knows that, and I know that. So if he has zero credits, that remote is very vulnerable, so he doesn't install the agenda unless he has the money. Plus, you know, even though Simone will help him advance the agenda, it's like he doesn't need to actually have credits to advance it. Uh, he does need the credit to make the corporal troubleshooter strong enough that I can't get in. So here's where I lose. I ran R&D that turn, and I spent all my money running R&D. He sea sourced me, but he didn't scorch. He trashed Katie Jones and liberated accounts. Because of the way I did that, I ran R&D and spent all my money on that R&D run. Hope that was my last ditch, I'm gonna win run. I have six points, and if I see an agenda, it's over. So all my money that I still had was in Katie Jones. It was in liberated accounts. I didn't have any money on the table anymore besides the two bad pubs and the two cyber feeders. Um, Pro Contacts doesn't help me get money fast enough, right? I, mean, I need 10 credits to get into R&D. So that C source, you know, people, they don't think of using C source that way. You know, too often. Um, but yeah, you can win games by using C-Source without Scorch. He tagged me. He trashed my money machine. I need to find more money somehow. Uh, probably with Pro Contacts. So I basically have a last-ditch move here. Right? I use my Parasite to shoot down that Roto Turret and run HQ because he only has one credit. I can see he only has one credit. So I'm just going to run HQ a bunch and hope there's an agenda in there. I'm pretty sure there isn't, but I do it anyway. See, so now strength is not an issue. But uh, credits are the issue. right? I'm locked out of R&D not because the whale's too weak, but because my money's too low. You know, the data sucker, I, no, no strength of anything is going to keep me out. Um, and yeah, look at that. He, he, I think I did see him draw an atlas there. <laughs> so I, I would have won if I would have had the 10 credits on that turn. So that sea source uh, would have been his loss if he didn't play it. So he puts another ice on HQ. Installs that atlas. In the unassailable remote server. I'm leaving my cyber feeders as credits. I don't need to make the whale bigger because I have data sucker tokens. Yep. I couldn't run. I couldn't run. He scored his atlas. Great game. Great game. What kind of game do you score five agendas and not win? And the Corp scores six agendas and has to discard two of them to archers and does win. That's craziness. Learn from this game, people. Learn to use the C source and learn 
the safest place to put money is on the table in front of me. Then again, even if the money was on the table in front of me, Caesar has closed accounts, but he didn't. He didn't have closed accounts. Netrunner is best game.